It is always now. I actually want to talk today about death. Now, most of us do our best not to think about death, but, but the, there's always part of our minds that knows this can't go on forever. We, we, the, part of us always knows that we're just a doctor's visit away or a, a phone call away from being starkly reminded with, with the fact of our own mortality or of those closest to us. Now, I'm sure many of you in this room have experienced this in some form. You, you, you must know how uncanny it is to suddenly be, be thrown out of the normal course of your life and just be given the, the full-time job of not dying or caring for someone who is. But the, the one thing people tend to realize at moments like this is that they wasted a lot of time when life was normal. Yeah, it's, not just what they, it's not just what they did with their time. It's not just that they spent too much time working or, or compulsively checking email. It's, it's that they, they cared about the wrong things. They, they regret what they cared about. Their, their attention was bound up in petty concerns. That year after year, when life was normal. And, and this is a paradox, of course, because we all know this epiphany is coming. I mean, don't you know this is coming? Don't you know that there's going to come a day when you'll be sick or someone close to you will die and you'll look back on the kinds of things that captured your attention and you'll think, what, what was I doing? You, you know this and yet if you're like most people, you will spend most of your time in life tacitly presuming you'll live forever. I mean, it's like watching a bad movie for the fourth time. Yeah. Or, or bickering with your spouse. I mean, this, these things only make sense in light of eternity. I mean, there better be a heaven if we're going to waste our time like that. Okay. There are ways to, to really live in the present moment. Okay, what, what's the alternative? Okay, it is always now. However much you feel you may need to plan for the future, to anticipate it, to mitigate risks, the reality of your life is now. Now, this may sound trite, but it's the truth. It's not quite true as a matter of physics. In fact, there's, there is no now that encompasses the entire universe. You can't talk of an event being simultaneously occurring here and one at the same moment occurring in Andromeda. The, the truth is that now is not even well defined as a matter of neurology because we know that inputs to the brain come at different moments and that, that consciousness is, is built upon layers of inputs whose timings have to be different. Our conscious awareness of the present moment is, in some relevant sense, already a memory. But as a matter of conscious experience, the reality of your life is always now. And I think this is a liberating truth about the nature of the human mind. In fact, I think there's probably nothing more important to understand about your mind than that, if you want to be happy in this world. But the past is a memory. It's a thought arising in the present. The future is merely anticipated. It is another thought arising now. What we truly have is this moment. And this. And this. And, and we spend most of our lives forgetting this truth, repudiating it, fleeing it, overlooking it. And, and the, the horror is that we succeed. We, we manage to never really connect with the present moment and find fulfillment there because we are, we are continually hoping to become happy in the future. And the future never arrives. Now, even when we think we're in the present moment, we're, we're in very subtle ways always looking over its shoulder 
anticipating what's coming next. We are always solving a problem. And it's possible to simply drop your problem, if only for a moment, and enjoy whatever is true of your life in the present. This is not a matter of new information or more information. It requires a change in attitude. It requires a change in the attentiveness you pay to your experience in the present moment. 